and welcome to Book Nook. I'm Lynn Kessler with Read Aloud West Virginia. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to read some wonderful books. And before we do that, we are going to talk to today's guest reader, Sally Hart with Great Expectations Realty. Hi, Sally. How are you? Hi, Lynn. Delighted to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Tell me what you do with Great Expectations Realty. Well, I've been in the real estate business most of my life, so it's basically not really selling houses, not really listing houses, but helping people. So it's a very, very geared to people business. Uh -huh. And as a result, I like for them to get a three-dimensional picture of me mm -hmm. so that the things that I do in the community that I love uh -huh. are very important. Okay. And reading to children is one of them. Okay. Books. Yes. Well, tell us, tell us a little bit about your love for books and how that started. Well, I can remember as a very, very young child sitting in my mother's lap while she read to me in a rocking chair until I suppose fell asleep. So I always remember being read to. Mm -hmm. Then as I grew a little older, I remember at Christmas there was a huge fireplace and two wing chairs on either side. And I learned very early, my brother's was on the left, mine was on the right, and the minute we could go in the living room, I made a beeline for that. Now, the stocking was on the mantel, full of goodies, uh -huh. but on the chair, pajamas, slippers, thank you notes, I wonder who got those, and best of all, were always new books. Oh. Always. Yeah. The next memory I have that is very strong that has to do with books was probably when I was seven or eight years old. Uh, Mom was a guest artist with the Charleston, then Charleston Symphony Orchestra, okay. now the West Virginia Symphony Orchestra. And we would go to Chautauqua in the summers, and she would study with the big boys to get her pieces ready. And May, I don't know what Dad did, but my brother and I went to the camps. Then in the evening, we would come home and go to dinner, but best of all, after dinner, there was this wonderful bookstore. Now, it might not look this way today, and it might not even be there, but my recollection is that it was a big square building, and we went down a few steps, like you'd go to a basement, but it wasn't. So you entered the door very quickly, and there was the ground level, but there were big windows all the way around. And everywhere were shelves full of shiny, shiny, good-smelling new books. Oh. Well, back then, Mother was so concerned that I become an intellectual, she always bought me landmark books, which is we would call historical fiction. Uh -huh. So you read about Joan of Arc uh, that a third grader can understand. Uh -huh. So I knew I had to pick out a landmark book, but then I trundled down the aisles until I found millions of Nancy Drew mystery oh, stories. Yes. And I loved them, <laughs> loved, loved, loved them. So when we went to the bookstore, I came out with two books every oh, okay. time, uh -huh. a landmark and a Nancy Drew. Yes. And I remember that so strongly. That's a good practice to, yeah. you know, I've always, have one. I loved reading in school. I used to memorize poetry and recite it to the den, uh, you know, stand uh -huh. up by myself uh -huh. and recite poetry. So I'm I've always adored books, yeah. and now in the summers I read at Vacation Bible School at St. Matt's, and I have young children, like some of the young children that will be with us today, and I get a big kick out of it. Yeah. Now what I do want to say to the kids is, do I have a Kindle? You bet. Mm -hmm. Do I have an iPad Mini? You bet. Yeah. Do I have books on them? Absolutely, and lots. Yeah. But I will tell you, in my mind, there is nothing more fun than curling up on a big cushy chair mm -hmm. or sofa with a brand new book and reading. Because in that book, I can go anywhere mm -hmm. I want to go. Mm -hmm. The solar system, under the ocean, I can be anyone I want to be as my imagination and the author leads me. Mm -hmm. So to me, 
Books are the most wonderful thing in the world, and I think they will always be special. If I'm in an airport, I might take my iPad Mini because I can have six books with me. It's more portable. They, they just don't weigh a thing. You're right. right. They're portable. Mm -hmm. But if I'm at home, and often I'll have one on my iPad Mini, and I'll buy the book yeah. because I like turning the pages. There's something about it. And like the children, Lynn, I like the pictures, you know, the uh -huh. books with pictures yeah. fascinate me. Mm -hmm. There is something about the, the sensation of holding a book. and There is. And, and I think that transfers over to the relationship, the memories that you have of being a child and, and being with family, being with parents. It's all, there is a physical aspect to it, and I think physical books do accomplish that better. Than well, I agree with you, and I think, and I see young children do this, and this is what I love about Read Aloud. As we stimulate their love of books, mm -hmm. they want to go home and get the book, and you've seen young babies do it. They've heard the book so much, they will read it mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Now, they've got the words memorized, but they can point to the pictures and they know mm -hmm. where they are in the story. So, very young, we can learn that mm -hmm. a book is just an amazing thing. And yeah. if, you know, if you're stuck with a broken ankle, as I was once, and really couldn't play tennis and oh. some of the other things I love to uh -huh. do, those books are right there. And yes. I was on the move. Yes. Yeah, they can take you anywhere. <laughs> they can. Yeah. Okay, well, where are you going to take us today? You're going to read to some kids. What, uh, I do. What books are you going to read for us today? I've got fabulous books. They're some of my favorites. I've got one that's called When Spring Comes, okay. and I've got another one, which I think they're going to chuckle and like a lot, <laughs> called Interrupting Chicken. It's a great read. It, that it's like my a good very, one. very favorite. You'll know when I read it that I get very excited about uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. And if we have time, I have a book which is very new and unheard of called The Book with No Pictures. Uh -huh. And it is a book with no pictures, but it's a great read. They're all just fun and delightful and I can't wait. Okay, well I think the kids are in for a real treat and uh, we will start with When Spring Comes. All right. Hi, my name is Sally Hart and I've got a great bunch of books today for us to read and I also have some great listeners. How are you all today? Good. Good? Good? Yeah. Do you remember my name? Tell them my name. Miss Sally. I'm Sally Hart, and I'm a reader from Read Aloud. And today's book is called When Spring Comes. It's a fun book. It's short, but it's fun. By Kevin Hanks. And when spring comes, I think of a lot of colors and pretty things. That's what spring is. So, also, he said for Will... And Clara. I think Will and Clara might be the author's children. Before spring comes, the trees look like black sticks against the sky. But if you wait, spring will bring leaves and flowers. Before spring comes, the grass is brown. But if you wait, Spring will turn it green and add little flowers. That sound like springtime? Yeah. Yeah. If you wait, an egg will become a bird and a seed will begin to grow. It sounds like spring to me. Spring comes with sun and it comes with rain and more rain and more rain and more rain. Do you like mud puddles? Do you like mud? Yes. And I really hope you like umbrellas. Mm -hmm. Before spring comes, the garden is just dirt and empty. But if you wait, spring will push green shoots through the dirt to fill up the garden. Anybody got a garden? Raise your hand. And spring will call out the pussy willows and newborn 
kittens. There will be buds and bees and boots and bubbles everywhere in the spring. There will be worms and wings and wind and wheels. Your tricycle, your bicycle, your wagon. You'll feel it. You'll smell it. You'll hear it. What do you hear in the spring? Birds. In the tree. Birds. Now, if you think that spring is finally here to stay, you might think you're done waiting, but you're not. Because now you have to wait for summer. The end. Spring is just one of my favorite seasons. That is until summer comes. And now we're going to read another book. And it is my all-time favorite. It's called Interrupting Chicken. I may, I don't need glasses, but I may put them on just in case. The book cover says, This book is called Interrupting Chicken, right, Papa? Yes. Now, please, don't interrupt the story. Interrupting Chicken by David Ezra Stein. It was bedtime for the little red chicken. I bet this sounds familiar to you. Okay, my little chicken, said Papa. Are you ready to go to sleep? Yes, Papa, but you forgot something. What's that? asked Papa. A bedtime story. All right, said Papa. I'll read one of your favorites. And of course, you're not going to interrupt the story tonight, are you? Oh, no, Papa. I'll be good. We think. And Papa began to read Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel were very hungry. Deep in the woods, they found a house made of candy. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Nibble, nibble, nibble. They began to eat the house until the old woman who lived there came out and said, What lovely children! Why don't you come inside? And they were just about to follow her when out jumped little red chicken and she said, Don't go in, she's a witch. So Hansel and Gretel didn't go in. The end. Chicken. Yes, Papa. You interrupted the story. Try not to get so involved. I'm sorry, Papa, but she really was a witch. Well, you're supposed to be relaxing so you can fall asleep. Let's try another story. Okay, I'll be good. And Papa began to read the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Take this basket of goodies to Grandmama, said Little Red Riding Hood's Mama. But don't stray from the path. The woods are full of danger. Red Riding Hood skipped along through the deep woods. By and by, she met a wolf who wished her, Good morning! She was about to answer him when... I jumped Little Red Chicken, and she said, Don't talk to strangers. So Little Red Riding Hood didn't. The end. Chicken. Yes, Papa. You did it again. You interrupted two stories. You're not even sleepy. 
I know, Papa. I'm sorry, but he was a mean old wolf. Yes, but now you've got to get back into bed. Papa, let's try just one more little story, and I'll be good. And so Papa began to read the story of Chicken, Chicken Little. Chicken Little was hit on the head by a acorn. The sky is falling, she thought. She was about to run off and warn Goosey Lucy and Ducky Lucky and Henny Penny and everyone on the farm that the sky was falling. Out jumped Little Red Chicken and she said, Don't panic, it was just an acorn. And they didn't. The end. Chicken? Yes, Papa. You did it again. Oh, Papa, I couldn't let that little chicken get all upset over an acorn. Please read me just one more story. And I promise I'll fall asleep. The chicken, said Papa. We're out of stories. Oh, no, Papa. I can't go to sleep without a story. Then said Papa, Yawning, why don't you tell me a story? Me? Tell a story? Said the little chicken. Okay, Papa, here we go. Mm, mm. Bedtime for Papa by Chicken. Once upon a time, there was a little red chicken who put her Papa to bed. She read him a hundred stories. She even gave him warm milk, but nothing worked. He stayed wide awake. Oh. <laughs> Papa, said Little Red Chicken. So little red chicken climbs into bed and says, Good night, Papa. The end. Did you like little red chicken? Yeah. She got too excited, didn't she? And she kept interrupting. Oh, my. Well, you want to read one more book? Yes. All right. You like these books? Yes. They're just my favorites. But then every book is my favorite. This is called The Book. You can read this with no pictures. pictures. That's right. A book. You do? Well, you'll know what I'm going to say, because this is the book with no pictures by B.J. Novak. Really, the book with no pictures. It might seem like no fun to have someone read you a book with no pictures. It probably seems boring and serious, except here's how books work. Everything the words say, the person reading the book has to say. Has to say. That's what I'm doing. No matter what. That's what it says. No matter what. That's the deal. That's the rule. 
So that means even if the words say blork, wait, what? That doesn't mean anything. Blurf. Wait a second, what? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read. And I have to say every word the book says? Uh-oh. I am a monkey who taught myself to read. <laughs> hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I'm reading you this book with my monkey mouth in my monkey voice. That's not true. I'm not a monkey. Yes, I am a monkey. Also, I am a robot monkey. Robot monkey. Robot monkey. What? And my head is made of blueberry pizza. Blueberry pizza. Blueberry pizza. <laughs> Wait a second. Is this whole book a trick? Can I stop reading now, please? No, says the book. And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song? Do I really have to sing a glug, glug, glug? My face is a bug. <laughs> I eat ants for breakfast right off the rug. <laughs> what? This book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading yet? No. no. <laughs> there are more pages? I have to read the rest? My only friend in the whole wide world is named a hippo named Boobot. Boobot? Boobot? And also, the kid that the kid I'm reading this book to is the best kid ever. The best kid ever. In the history of the entire world. Really? And this kid is the smartest kid, too. Because this kid chose this book even though it had no pictures. No pictures because kids know this is the book that makes grown-ups have to say silly things Whew, does it ever and make silly sounds oh no here it comes <laughs> I do. Aye. Aye, aye. Blah. 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 Yes. Bliggity, bliggity. Glibbity, globbity. Globbity, glibbity. Beep. Boop. Yee. That doggy face! <laughs> Is that what I'm looking at? The doggy face. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Please, don't ever make me read this book again. It is so silly. In fact, it's downright preposterous. Next time, please, 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 choose a book with pictures. Please, because this is just 
too ridiculous to read. The end. I didn't mean to do that. The last book we're going to read is called Cappy Boppy by Bill Peet. Since early childhood, my son Bill has been fascinated by the wild creatures living around Los Angeles and Southern California. His room has always been part zoo and part museum with a bed sandwiched in between. Over the years, this bedroom zoo has included tarantulas, praying mantises, scorpions, turtles, frogs, horned toads, lizards, kangaroo rats, pack rats, and a variety of harmless snakes. After observing these creatures for a while, Bill always set them free in the general area where he'd found them, only to return with another variety of small animal. So the zoo was forever changing. When Bill entered college, he majored in natural sciences, and long hours of study left little time for creature collecting. Early one spring, the zoo had dwindled to its lowest population in years, and a mere pair of tarantulas. It was then he decided on a new, spectacular addition. I know where I can get a boa at a bargain, Bill said. This brought an immediate storm of protest from my wife, Margaret, our younger son, Steve and me. That's dad talking. We knew that Bill was sometimes careless and left a lid slightly ajar on one of his glass cases. There was one time when a king snake came slithering out to the kitchen. And one afternoon, a tarantula was found stumbling out on a bedspread. These creatures were easily captured and returned to their headquarters so there was no problem. However, if a big boa should come out of his cage and take a tour of the house, that would be another matter. We had our three cats to worry about. Three hopelessly spoiled cats who were fussy about their food and spent much time drowsing upon chairs and sofas or stretched out on a rug. Spoiled or not, we were extremely fond of them, and I shivered at the thought of a giant snake reclining on a sofa with three cat-sized lumps in his tummy. Ooh, ooh. It's only a small boa, said Bill. Small boas grow into big boas, I argued. All right, said Bill. I'll forget about the boa. Now, how about a capybara? You know what? We're out of time today. Thank you so much for joining us. I've got to thank six great listeners, and I'm going to encourage you to go to the library closest to you and get a book to read. Reading is fun. Reading is forever. So thanks again for joining us. All right, said Bill. I'm going to forget the snake, but I do want a capybara. Fine, fine, we quickly agreed. That's much more like it. 